Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Jessica Svaraza joins us. She's a government affairs consultant and a former Reno City Councilwoman for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad a No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are pleased to welcome back to the program after a 10-year absence, Jessica Sferraza, the former Reno City Councilwoman. She's a government affairs consultant. A pleasure to have you back on the program. Oh, pleasure to be here, Sam. Um, you, the last time you were on, you were running for lieutenant governor. Can you believe that? I know. It's been a while. Um, you're, you're with us remote because of uh, the coronavirus, and so we're utilizing Zoom. Um, so we're grateful for that technology. I wanted to just start out by asking your thoughts on the coronavirus and the effect it's having on Reno and Nevada. Well, it's been very devastating. I'm, I'm certainly glad that governor, both the mayor and the governor, um, uh, did essential shutdowns, non-essential shutdowns. I think um, it was important for the health and safety of of everyone in Reno and everyone in Nevada. And I'm hopeful um, that we can come out of this quicker, healthier, and um, as one community. Um, as you talk to uh, your contacts in the gaming industry, um, what are their biggest concerns at this point? Um, I think, you know, just the devastation, layoffs, being able to bring back employees. Um, you know, I think it's been, um, especially the tourism industry, it's been very hard hit. Um, and the magnitude of how many employees still work for gaming in our state, it's a crucial part of our economy and um, just want to get things going again. Um, people don't realize, because there's been so much diversification in northern Nevada, um, that how big a part of northern Nevada gaming still is. Am I correct? It's a very big part. I think it's still over 20% of the workforce here in northern Nevada. So it's, it's very important. You have a lot of people who rely, depend on the gaming industry, not just the people who um, directly work for gaming, but all the suppliers who um, do business um, with gaming and hospitality. I mean, it's widespread, um, the effects of, of the shutdown it had on everyone. Um, you sit on the airport authority board. What can you share with us about what's happening um, at the airport? Well, I think um, the flights, we've had obviously a lot of uh, flight cancellations. Um, I will say um, the board and our executive director, Marilyn Mora, um, we've been working with the airlines to see if there's 
um, things that we can do, whether it's parking their planes um, and just trying to basically lift them up um, during this time. Um, we're looking at landing fees. All things are going to be on the table as we come forward and do and when we do our budgets because we want to make sure that um, when this is, ends that we have a, a thriving airport um, and that's crucial to our community. And it's ironic because um, the, the board and uh, Marilee Mora have done an incredible job over the last few years of building up the flight service for Reno. It really has an extraordinary amount of service uh, for a relatively small community. Um, how hard is it going to be to be able to bring that back? Well, I think um, there are going to be some challenges. That being said, um, we look at um, our airport, we're one of the lowest for fees, for landing and takeoff fees. Um, so that's beneficial um, and that'll, especially now, that'll continue to be beneficial as um, we're keeping the, the cost low for our airlines to do business here. And also, Sam, a large part of it obviously is demand and um, the Air Service Corporation, which is made up of gaming and others in the business community, help basically guarantee those flights. Um, they guarantee um, the seats if they're not booked. Um, so they're gonna play a, a crucial role um, in the upcoming months um, on making sure that we uh, preserve as much air service as we can for the long-term future. Um, are, you, are you comfortable with a solvency? Because um, it would appear that uh, the gaming companies that operate out of Northern Nevada, uh, for the most part, um, seem to be pretty solvent companies. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, um, of course, I think El Dorado, I mean, um, I think um, all of the gaming companies here in Northern Nevada, Jacobs Entertainment, they've all done a great job. And yeah, full disclosure, Sam, I represent both of those companies. Um, but I think gaming overall in Northern Nevada, um, um, we're also more diversified um, up north. Um, so I think, you know, we're going to continue to um, weather the storm and, and hope, hoping things get back up and running soon. Um, but obviously, you don't want um, to open up too soon. You want to make sure that it's safe to do that. And so um, have full trust and faith in the governor and making that decision. Um, the Reno State Airport um, is operated by uh, the Reno Airport Authority. Um, uh, Tell us where the discussions are in terms of perhaps uh, providing space for the homeless there. Well, a couple things. Um, I do want to touch on the economic development out there, Sam. We do have a um, economic project um, out there, quite a big one. It's not discussed a lot uh, with Dermody Properties. So looking forward um, um, to um, the future with that project, um, industrial, also aerospace. There's a lot of things that they're looking at that I think as we move forward into the future is going to be important. Um, there are some old barracks out there um, that the guard left in uh, back in December. Um, so the board voted actually last Friday to um, allow either the city or the county um, to go ahead and use those barracks if needed. Uh, during this crisis, um, and I'm pleased to say that was a unanimous vote to allow that to occur. So we just want to be proactive and make sure that we weren't having a call of meeting and we were able to um, open up the barracks as soon as we can. Um, let me ask you, if we can, because it's on a positive note, about this economic development uh, with uh, Dermody. For people that may not know, Dermody Properties has, has been a huge developer over the years and has opened up many projects across the state of Nevada and around the country. Um, what exactly are they looking at in terms of uh, um, uh, projects there? Yeah, they're bit, they've been looking at several things out there. Um, Sam, it's a huge master plan and also um, there's some pieces with the Regional Transportation Commission as well as getting um, a lot of people don't know this out there in the community, but um, industrial space is at a premium. There's um, obviously land. Um, there's a lot of industrial that's still needed out there, to, especially now more than ever, keep jobs going. Um, so they're looking at a variety of things to do out instead. Um, and I think we've got a great partner there. Um, I can't disclose too much at this point, but um, we've got a, I think a great partner out there at 
Hempstead and, and they've been moving forward. And so far I've invested a lot of um, money on their plans out there. Okay, so two quick follow-ups on that, and, and you can tell me that you can't discuss it if necessary. Um, would one of the things be, when you say aerospace, would that be drone technology? I think, well, drone technology, as you know, NASA's out there and was doing testing out there on the drones, um, and our executive director at the airport serves on that National Drone Committee. Um, but also, I think um, definitely that's not out of um, the equation, Sam. Um, I think... Um, it's also more in depth than just drones. I think there's other um, potential out there as well um, that they're looking at. Um, and, and can you give me some idea of the acreage that um, is, is under consideration you know, for development? I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to stump me on that one. Okay, I, I, no I worries. Don't know okay. offhand. I don't have that. Okay, but at, at a time when we have so many negative things going on, it's great to hear something positive. So let's take a break. We'll come back more with Jessica Sferraza after this timeout. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Jessica Sferraza. She's a government affairs consultant and a former Reno City Councilwoman. Um, the bowlers um, have been a huge deal uh, for Reno. Uh, we would not have the Silver Legacy or the Tri Properties or El Dorado Resorts buying um, Caesars if it weren't for the bowlers. Um, tell us what you can about the tournament that was supposed to have been held um, at this time and where it might be. Yeah, and Sam, interesting on the bowlers, it, it was, um, I think the Carano family and my father, when he was the mayor, um, brought that big convention here. And, and I can't tell you to this day how important uh, the bowlers are for the Northern Nevada economy. I mean, they bring in over a four month period, over 50,000 people here to our region. Um, I'm, I'm still hopeful. I mean, they had delayed it till May. Um, I believe the, the talks with them, they're still um, planning on coming. Um, probably not gonna be in May now, but sometime this year it would be great. And I'm optimistic, keeping optimistic, they're still gonna come to our region this year for that tournament. Um, it's a lot of room nights, a lot of sales tax, huge economic um, boom for the um, area. And, and I think uh, desperately needed, um, especially this year. So I think again, when it's safe for things to reopen, um, all those things are um, gonna be essential as we move forward. Um, the convention authority, the Reno Sparks Convention Authority, um, they have some great leadership there uh, with folks like Jennifer Cunningham. Um, what are they doing to try and be proactive? 
Yeah. And I think a lot of these um, conventions that have canceled, Sam, I think in the new age, big groups, um, I think they're, they're speaking to them being proactive and saying, Hey, why don't you come to Reno um, and bring your, um, you know, convention to Reno? Cause maybe they were booked and, and during another time in the year um, they can't get into that particular venue. Um, and so we certainly, um, I think they're being proactive and looking at ways they can welcome them to the biggest little city. So I think everyone's looking forward and I think um, that's what you want to do right now for when this crisis ends is are we, are we preparing to move forward? So. All right, let's take another break. We'll come back with Jessica Sferraza after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and because I represent men in all family law matters, Women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Like a traditional handmade basket, Retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, as we continue our conversation with Jessica Sferraza. She's the former Reno City Councilwoman, uh, ran for Lieutenant Governor back in 2010. She's now a government affairs consultant. Um, obviously, growth um, has been a huge topic in Northern Nevada uh, for the last several years. Um, there are benefits and there are uh, detriments. Um, as you look at it, um, right now we have discussion of a, a lands bill for the Truckee Meadows. And some folks are saying, you know, we don't want to expand the territory. We need to do infill in the city. Where do you stand on this? Well, I think, Sam, I think um, you obviously have to have um, preservation of open space areas throughout the region. I mean, we have a beautiful, that's one of the things that uh, attracts people to northern Nevada is the beauty, the mountain. Rose Wilderness, Peavine Peak. I think there's room for both. I think you want to be able to preserve as much open space as you can and obviously allow for areas that are suitable for development to develop. Um, I also think um, that providing um, incentives for infill, um, making the zoning regulations um, easier, um, also, I mean, we did that when I was there with the transit, the, the Todd's they call them, um, and also, but there were some things that probably need to be in, adjusted in the zoning regulations to make it easier for people to develop in infill areas. And quite frankly, it's a lot more expensive to build um, in infill areas. That's part of the problem. That's why you get that that, um, you know, saying drive until you qualify. Um, so it's, and typically that's because when somebody's assembling a piece of land in an urban type environment, it's very costly to do that. So I think things are going to have to be looked at on how you 
um, engage infill projects. I can tell you firsthand the Park Lane project helping out with the sewer. I mean, it was like a spider web under there where the old Park Lane Mall was. Um, and to be able to, the city council um, provided some help um, in way of allowing the developer to build the sewer infrastructure there. And that's why you see that project happening now. So I think the more you can do to also encourage infill, um, the better off because you're, you know, in transit areas. But I do think you need both. Um, what about the opportunity zones? Uh, they, they, they appear to be quite helpful. For example, uh, with Harris Reno um, uh, being sold to a new company, um, and, and they're right, in, even though they're in downtown Reno, they're right in the middle of an opportunity zone. Is that helpful? I think it is for some people. And, and I know uh, there's been abuses around the country for opportunity zones, but I also think there's some good that can come out of it. If you get housing, um, you have a lot of vacant lands that, have, uh, that has sat there downtown or dilapidated buildings to encourage somebody to come and invest um, and in those zones, I think it's good for the community. I mean, um, if you look at how downtown's transforming, I think you're seeing a lot of um, infill development start to happen and quite frankly, need more housing. When you get the housing, we have studies that, hey, you can't, people always ask, why don't we have a grocery store downtown? Well, you need the population, you need the residents to be there. Um, in order for those retail services to happen. And I think with the university coming down to those student housing projects, I think, um, you know, three, four years from now, you're gonna see a whole new look for downtown Reno. Um, what's the incentive for people to build um, uh, housing for, you know, the, the working poor? Um, because it seems like for the middle class and the upper class, uh, there's plenty of profit for developers to be able to build that kind of housing, but but what what will we see in terms of help for people who want to build housing for uh, the financially challenged? Well, I think you're seeing it in different ways, Sam. Um, there's a project, um, Summit Sierra, um, that's near the Summit Sierra Mall out there. And what it is, it's the first one in the state that was like 76% market rate and 20 Four percent affordable, and what happens is that's a type of inclusionary zoning, and it allows the market rate to subsidize uh, uh, a workforce housing component of that. So the market rate part, I think, and don't quote me here, but you're looking at example. Um, you'll have a one bedroom that might be twelve hundred at a market rate, and then you have six eighty for a. Uh, the workforce housing or affordable housing piece. So I think more of that is going, you're going to see more of that happening in the future where you're allowing developers to have more density and then they get what's called tax credits. Um, also, they get what's called home funds to help those projects pencil out and make sense. Um, and they've been very successful um, in California. Um, and this one, um, what, from what I'm being told, it's got a wait list to to uh, um, live there as well. So, let, let me ask you about this. Um, it you know when you look at Story County and their ability to get things passed quickly. That the day you arrive, if you want to do a project, you get a grading permit. Um, we saw North Las Vegas. Uh, adopt a lot of uh, the, the rules from uh, Story County uh, to speed things along in North Las Vegas. Um, do you ever see Reno or Washoe County uh, being able to speed things up so they can help developers not have to wait two years to get a project done? Yeah, and Sam, um, that's a great question. I think part of it is a balancing act because when you're looking at um, hillside ordinance or, or a a uh, flood uh, prone area. Um, obviously, I know being on, uh, on that side of the table, you wanna make sure that you're vetting those projects. Um, I do think you're gonna see more develop what's called development agreements in the future, where you get, where the developer could come in, um, put um, certain things that they want, especially infill into an agreement and allow the council to have a obviously a, a public hearing on it. It's totally transparent for a much quicker process if that development agreement um, could be approved and and uh, basically it gives the developer a shovel ready, ready to go. And I think you're going to see more of those come forward with, especially on the infill project side. 
Um, let me ask you one more question here, um, and that uh, concerns transportation. Uh, we're seeing the RTC of Washoe County doing a phenomenal job um, on uh, Virginia Street, the main drag through Reno. Um, but one of the issues that uh, we're dealing with is um, on I-80 uh, between Reno and the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. Uh, Lee Gibson was on the program, the former head of the RTC, and saying um, that th if, if that's going to be expanded, widened, it's going to be local dollars, not federal dollars. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Sam, I think that's a balancing act because you talk to the people in the North Valleys too, um, getting that spaghetti bowl done in 395. Um, and also, it, you know, uh, the transportation dollars, the RTC, they're going to have to take a critical look at where those resources go. Um, you know, there's obviously um, more projects that need to be funded than there is dollars. Um, um, it just works. So I think the growth patterns, I think um, you'll see. Um, I, that's why I think you're going to see a lot of focus, too, on these infill projects. And that's where we have to leave it. Please don't wait 10 years before coming back. I <laughs> would love to see you again, Sam. <laughs> Thank You're you. You're always Thanks welcome. Thank you, Jessica. On. Thank you. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety, too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.